Um, we have the live crowd now joining us. I guess you're the live crowd. <laughs> but it's, it's, good to have, it's good to have those now joining us with us. Some of them are our members. Hi, members. I know that you're uh, quarantined because you don't have the sickness, but you've been around somebody. And we are praying that you do not get the Chinese virus. We're praying that. Nobody needs that, amen? Oh my goodness. We need to get rid of that stuff. Okay, in the book of 2 Corinthians, as you turn there, chapter 1, I want you to listen to this as, as we read. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our troubles which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. They thought they was going to die. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Listen to this now. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The three phases of life. Before, the here and now, and the future. The great deliverance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. So many people have been sick and have suffered great things. And, and we've prayed and you've answered our prayers according to your will. And, and Lord, we're not going to stop praying for these folks because they all have a special need. But we ask that you will be with them and help them as, as they, Lord, try to regain their health. Some folks, we're praying that will get saved. We'll trust today we'll hear the glorious news that they accepted Christ as Savior. And yet others, there are others who belong to you that have walked so far away from you. I pray that today they'll start that journey to you, close to you, loving you and putting you first. Defeat Satan in this hour. Lord, let us see souls saved. Let us see Christians' hearts just catch fire again for you. We thank you for this time we have. In Jesus' name, amen. It's almost unbelievable how many times our Heavenly Father delivers us from problems, accidents, heartaches. And many times we're not even aware of it. One of the greatest joys I've found in my Christian life is the keeping and the staying power of our Heavenly Father. Oh, what a keeping power He has. Oh, what a staying power He has. And, and it is wonderful. In our text this morning, we find three different, different, definite positions in which he doth deliver. And if we look closely, we will see that they cover not only our present, past life, present life, but our eternal life span. So many times as a pastor, I forget that everyone is not aware of all of God's benefits. I've been doing this for a long time. I've lived, I lived a life in a pastor's home. And so we were privileged to understand the benefits from God. And sometimes I forget we have new Christians that really haven't experienced all the benefits from God that he has for them. But I, I, want, to, I want to take time this morning to, to reflect on his goodness now, for those of you who are older Christians in the Lord, you'll say, oh, how juvenile this is, or, oh, preacher, we already know this. But you know, sometimes it's good to renew our knowledge, and it's good to refresh our, our times. I have a buddy that uh, when we get together, we reminisce. 
And his son and my son will be standing there and as we're reminiscing. And both of our boys would say this, I don't have anybody like that to have stories like this. We had a close relationship, a close friendship. They said, I don't have stories like this. You see, it's good for us old guys to start reflecting and remembering things of the past. And I feel the same way about this message. Maybe you already know this, but it's good to reflect on these good things that God has done for us. And so we need to understand the wonderful thing that Christ is a great deliverer. First of all, he says, hath delivered. You know, Christ loves to deliver from sin. Sin is such an awful thing, uh, that uh, burden that we carry. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And you, I love that because it's such a personal, personal statement. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin. You know what brings God great joy? is to bring alive a soul that is dead. You say, preacher, I'm not dead. Oh, maybe not in the flesh. But our soul, if we're outside of Jesus Christ, is just as dead as our doornail. You say, well, why do you say that? I don't know of a doornail that's alive, you know? So we're just dead as a doornail. And if you remain lost, that sin becomes an albatross. You say, well, that's sort of funny because an albatross is a bird. But if you look at a definition, an albatross is something that keeps you also from accomplishing things that need to be accomplished. It's sort of a heavy weight. It's, it's a burdensome thing that you have hanging around your neck. The burden of sin will drive you literally into the ground. It will, it will beat you up. It will spit you out. And then the only thing thing that you have in front of you is hell and the lake of fire. You say, Pastor, those are not even real places. They're very real today, and the devil would have you think different, but they're very real. And as we're speaking right now, many of your souls are departing their life and heading for that awful pit called hell. And as I say all the time when I'm talking about hell, there is a place worse than hell, and it's called the lake of fire. And death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And so it's, it's important to understand that Christ delivers us from our past. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1, would you join me real quick in the book of Isaiah chapter 1? God's wanting to reason with us. You say, preacher, there's, there's no reasoning with people. Sometimes it feels that way. But God says this as he impressed this upon Isaiah's heart. He says in verse 18 of chapter 1 of Isaiah, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You see, God wants to have that fellowship with mankind. He, he, wants, he wants that that soul to know that there is peace and there is eternal life and there is the unloading of great sin. I say this so often, is each and every one of us are great sinners. You know how I know? Because we have a great Savior. If we have a great Savior, we know our sin is great. It is good to know that God will forgive our past offenses. We are, it's a good thing to know that God will love us and forgive us of our sin. We know that they're only done through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every one of us having things in the past that we'd like to forget, including heartaches, bad decisions, things that we created in ourselves and by our own hands, things that came at us because of those outside. Each and every one of us have a heartache that, that we hold in our heart. But you know, God has delivered us from our past and we can move forward. In the book of Psalms 103, in verse 12, God tells us what He does with our sin if we'll come to Him. 
We know that there is no, there is no measurable distance between east and west. Now, if you head here and you go north, at some point, you know what way you're going to be going? South. Because what pole did you hit? The North Pole. And then when you hit that other pole, which is what? You guys are so smart. <laughs> the South Pole. Which way do you go? You start heading north again, don't you? But you know, God tells us about His love and His forgiveness over in this book of Psalms. 103 verse 12 he says as far as the east is from the west you know you could head out and start going east and you could go around the world and end up here and you're still facing east which way will you be going east at all times you say which way is east in this building I don't know this is east you say well that looks south to me no that's east South is here, north is here, and that way is... Okay, you're smart, I tell you. It's west. And did you know if you start heading west from here that you could go around the world several times? And what way will you still be heading? West. And do you know that's how far God separates our sin? Isn't that wonderful? If we could be that way, somebody sins against us or offends us, we're not so easily to forgive it, are we? We're not so easily to put it behind our backs to remember it no more. We say, well, I have a horrible memory, but I remember those who've done me wrong. But let me ask you something. Have you ever done anybody wrong? Would you like for them to forget it? I think we ought to do the same. But God has forgiven our sins. We need a God, a God that forgives sins. We need a God that will not hold them against us. Some have not been delivered through the blood of Jesus Christ. They haven't been delivered. You say, well, how do you get delivered, Pastor? By letting Jesus to be your Savior. So if you're not delivered, you're still in the pits of despair. And nobody wants to be in the pits of despair. Nobody wants to have this thing holding over their head that they are without Christ, with no hope. Because each and every one of us have a hope or can obtain a hope. And his name is Jesus. And he's the one that can take that eternal death away from us, that eternal despair, and give us life. He's the one that will take our dead soul and quicken it and make it alive. Over in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, and in verse 22, the scripture says this, and almost all things are by the blood pur uh, are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. My friends, Jesus Christ being that paschal lamb, that sacrificial lamb, he had to die on the cross. He had to pour his life's blood out that we can have life eternal. So many preachers, and I'm not going to fault them really, but they say Jesus spilled his blood on the cross. There was no accident. Spill is an accident. I spill things all the time. I do not do it on purpose. Well, sometimes I do, but most of the times I don't. I love going to a restaurant and drink, and I usually get water, and I love drinking all my water down and, and putting it on there. And then I love to start talking with my hands and if it's a plastic glass, I will... That's sort of an oxymoron. You can't have a plastic glass, can you? A plastic cup. I will go like this and I will hit it. And I always push it towards somebody who's sitting across the way from me. And you can't believe how fast they stand up. Now, that is, that's not an accident. But how many's ever been and spilt a glass of water or something? Isn't it an accident? You know, Jesus did not accidentally spill his blood on the cross. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation he was a lamb slain from the foundation of this earth. Can you understand that in the book of Colossians the Bible says Jesus created. He's the head of the church. That as he was building this universe and, and as he was creating us, he knew as he was creating us that there would be a time that he would go to the cross to pour out his blood.
that we could be plunged underneath the blood of Calvary and have life eternal. You see, God is willing to deliver us from the past. But not only is He willing to deliver us from the past, He's willing to deliver us from the present. You know, many times we forget sometimes we're our own worst enemies. You say, well, I've got some enemies out there. Well, I'm sure everybody does. But you know, a lot of times in our life, we are our own worst enemies. We create our own troubles. Have you ever seen anybody, and I know you have, this is a rhetorical question. Have you ever seen anybody that, that you look at and said, boy, if, you could ever, if they could ever get over themselves, they would have a pretty good life. I mean, it's just like they, they destroy their own life. And you wonder, why would you do that? These are the kind of people, if it rains silver dollars, now you kids don't know what a silver dollar is, but they used to be a pretty good sized chunk of silver. If it rained silver dollars, you'd have boxing gloves on. How many remembers that old saying? Now, people know what boxing gloves are, I'm sure. But uh, that's, that's something. Sometimes we have to fight our own selves. But you know what the Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 4? He tells us that, that he that's within us is greater than he that is out of us. In the book of John... 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He says, Ye are of God, little children. And when you have Jesus Christ in your heart, I want you to remember that you are of God. How many here this morning know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Isn't it great to be able to hold your hand up and testify, I know for a fact that I'm going to heaven. Isn't that exciting? He says you belong to God. There is an old song that we used to sing a, 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 as a special around here. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. How many remember that old song? Boy, isn't it a grand thing to be able to sing, I belong to Jesus? That's such a wonderful thing. He said, he said uh, because you are God's little children and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can you imagine this? Greater is God that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? Who's the prince of the power of the air? Well, old smutty face himself. It is Satan. God in you is greater. He's a deliverer in this present. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know and to understand? I know we create our own problems many times, and it's done because of carelessness. Sometimes it's done because of lack of wisdom, and sometimes it's done because of our egotism and, and our selfishness. But you know, God can deliver us. He can deliver us. He has that desire to deliver us. Christ helps us get over ourselves. He gives us a great set of rules to live by. And for the first time, we really learn and share and live for others. This brings fulfillment. When we start considering ourselves so high and start looking at others' needs, we become a better people and we feel more fulfilled. I've said this many times, and other preachers have said it in the past. I'm not the originator of it. But you know when you're feeling so low and when you're feeling so down and when you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, quit, quit looking to yourself. Look to somebody else who has a need. Say, preacher, nobody has a greater need than me. There are always people around you that need you so badly and sometimes you have to say no to yourself and yes to somebody else. Say, preacher, my health. Think about somebody else's spiritual health. Are you a Christian? Well, no matter what happens to you, you're going to heaven. But what if there's somebody that's healthy and they're lost? Say, well, at least they have their health, but, but they're dead. They need a Savior. Quit looking at your problem and say, you want me to ignore him? No, you can't ignore them. But you don't have to bathe yourself in them. You don't have to shower yourself in them. 
You don't have to jump in it and wallow in it. You look to others because God can deliver. Someone told me of somebody I know that's not going to live much longer. And they're reaching out to people, trying to make connections. You know, we're all going to die. We're all going to go through that valley of the shadow of death. Say, preacher, I'm looking for that rapture time. Oh, yeah. But you know, we're still going to die. We're not taking this body with us. He'll deliver us. Sometime saying goodbye to this life is a delivery in itself. <laughs> Amen. He delivers us. We have problems. God can deliver you out of those problems. You have struggles. God can deliver you out of those struggles. The people who don't want delivered are those when God throws out a, a, a lifeline to you. You sit there and, and throw it back because we love to wallow in our sorrow. We love to wallow in our troubles. When we need to say, Lord, I got us into this mess. How are you going to get us out? Isn't that right? How are you going to get us out? But as I go out, let me bring somebody to you. Christ does deliver us from our presence. And then he delivers us for eternity. What a joy to know that hell can be a thing of the past and heaven our bright future. We as Americans, we've been very blessed. We've had a pretty good life. You say, preacher, don't even go there. No, 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 listen. Compared to the rest of the world, we've had a pretty good life. I know everybody's family is not the perfect family. Ours isn't. It would be. But they've got this guy in the family. His name is Terry. And man, he just runs it. We have our lives. And we live it to the best of our ability with God. Knowing this, that we're forever with the Lord. You say, preacher, when do you actually get your eternal life? Is it when you die? No, no. Your eternal life begins when you understand that you're a sinner standing before a great God. And you're godly sorrowful for that sin. Not that sin up here I got caught or that sin up here, well, if I, if I get saved, all my problems will go away. No, 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 that's not why we get saved. We get saved because we're sinners. Our soul desires God. And we come to Him in a childlike faith. Say, preacher, I don't understand this childlike faith. I could bring my grandkids over. Now, I'm the oldest one. I'm not going to do this because she'd jump out and take me down. But you can put a child right here on the platform. And you can see how high it is. You can put a child up there. One of your children. And you could call their name out. And say, jump to me. I'll catch you. And you know what those kids are going to end up doing? They're going to jump out to you because they know that you're going to catch them. You're not going to be one of those parents that say, Jump to me, Sonny, jump to me. And they jump and you let them go by. First lesson, number one, don't to trust a nobody. <laughs> no. You don't do that, do you? When they fall from something high by accident, it is just natural for you as an adult or a parent to run and chase and grab them yeah. from harm. My brother, I have tortured all of his life. 
I thought I'd hear an amen. I have had fun with that guy my whole life. He was down here at the front talking to somebody. And I had little old Lexi. Lexi couldn't walk, but she could stand. And little Lexi, I put her in my hand. That's how small she was. She was all dressed up pretty as a picture. And I had her in my hand, and I had a hold of her ankles, Brother Brock. And I was standing back there about midway. I'm not going to go back there because it's Chinese virus. But, but I was standing back there, and I, I held Lexi up like this. I said, Daddy! Look at your daughter. And I just held her. You think I was going to let her fall? No. He hollered at me running from right there to right there. And about the time he got to me, I cradled her in. He says, give me my daughter. No, I'll take care of her. I see how you take care of my daughter. You give me my daughter. Now, right, little brother. Yeah. Yeah. I said, no, I got her. Do you think, do you think that God in heaven, if you came to him with a broken heart and an understanding that you needed Jesus as your Savior, do you think he would let you not be saved? Because Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He paid that ultimate price. If you'll come to him in childlike faith, I want to tell you something. He'll save you. Not just enough to get by, but the Bible says he will save you to the utmost. These people who believe they get saved until they sin again. I feel sorry for them, Brother Tom. How would you like to live a life thinking that you could lose your salvation? That'd be a terrible way to live. I would hate the thought of that. But just because you live forever, eternal life begins at birth. Spiritually speaking. But just because you have eternal life, it doesn't give us a license to live ungodly in front of people, in front of our families, in front of our God. You see, God is willing to deliver us from sin. He's willing to deliver us from this present life. But yet He will deliver us. Because those that belong to Jesus are going to leave this life of sorrow, of frustration. A life that's sometimes horrible. And he takes us into heaven where sin can't corrupt, where death can't lay a hand on you anymore. This past week, I was given information of two people that died. They want us to do the funeral. Both of them totally upset over the death. You say, well, if you're Christian, no, no, no. I don't care who you are. You lose somebody you love, it affects you. It affects you. Because there's that bond you have. I want to tell you something. God will yet deliver those who will come to Him for salvation and will be delivered from this present world into the beautiful world to come which I believe has already been created. 
I hear preachers say, man, God's been working on this new heaven and new earth for over 2,000 years. Can you imagine how beautiful it is? He created the universe as we know it in six days. Shelly, I really believe this. I believe when John was given the vision of the new heaven and the new earth, I think it's already done. And I think he saw what's awaiting for those of us who will take time to let Jesus come into their heart. We just get a glimpse of it from his writings. But it's a place I want to go. And it's a place I'm going to get to go, not because of my righteousness, but because of God's righteousness. Let's all stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed, no one looking around. If you're here today without Jesus, I pray, I pray that you'll let Jesus come into your heart. If you're there at home or maybe you're traveling on the road, I pray that you'll stop. You'll stop that big old truck. You'll stop that vehicle along the side of the road, next roadside stop. Get down on your knees or sit there in your chair and ask Jesus to forgive you your sin. He'll save you right where you're at. If you're here today, would you step out and come to the altar and let somebody from His blessed Word show you what you must do to be saved? My friends, it's that important. He hath delivered, He will deliver. He will deliver us in this present day and He will deliver us one of these days. Because God is our great deliverer. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll now be with this portion of the service. Souls will be saved. Hearts.